The aubergines are lovely and fresh and grown locally, so there are no food miles. And that's something people who come in regularly seem to like. I'd definitely recommend them for a traditional Greek moussaka. Or if you felt like a vegetarian alternative, they can be roasted in the oven with courgettes, peppers and onions and then mixed with tomatoes. I absolutely love the electric bike I've got. And it'd be even better if you got one too, because then we could go out for long rides. So I'd say go for it. Although the only thing I'd say is I'd be careful about getting anything that looks very cheap. You tend to get what you pay for, and the last thing you want is a battery that isn't powerful enough. I've always thought of Yasmin as an incredibly talented artist, and in her latest work, Self Portrait, she paints a picture of herself as someone who has suffered love and loss, but you can hear in her voice that she has come out stronger and more independent. She's written everything on this album herself, and the result is a moving and personal work of art. Hello, James Watson. Oh, hello, Mr Watson. This is Carmen from Wheeler's Garage. I think you might be missing your bank card. Really? I'll just have a look in my wallet. Um... Yes, yes, I am. Oh, good. I thought it was probably yours. Not to worry. We have it here. I can leave it in reception, if you like. Thanks so much. I'll come and get it tomorrow. OK. Lovely. What did you think of the film? Well, I can see why it got that Best Director award. The girl who played Laura was unbelievable. And she's new which makes it even more amazing. And the leading man was almost as good. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not sure about that award, though. Still, it was worth seeing. As you can see, we've made a few revisions. Some lessons are longer for example, double maths on Tuesday. And that's to give you a deeper understanding of your subjects, which you'll need at the end of the year to get the very best grades you can. Free periods are for independent study, and this year, there will be a lot more of that in the evenings and at weekends as well. On today's programme, The Entertainment Age, we're going to talk about what it takes to create a video game. I have with me today Jakob, a game designer for Action First Games. Jakob and I actually used to work together at this game studio before I started working in radio. It was my first job after university. <laughs> I miss those days. Yeah, that was great fun and I was sad to see you leave, but I understand. 
You used to talk about working in radio, so I'm pleased you followed your dream. Yes. Well, I definitely learned a lot at Action First, though. I got to see how designers make video games. That wasn't my job exactly. I worked on story writing, and although most people don't think so, the stories in video games can be really challenging to develop. That's completely true. These days, video game players aren't just interested in shooting animated birds or racing fast digital cars. They want an experience with emotional value. As you probably know, the story behind the video game is the first step in creating a good game. Then you get into drawing the characters, the landscapes, the buildings, and so on. You can do that on the computer, or you can do it in the old-fashioned way with paper and pencil. And finally, the hard part: writing the game in computer language. You can then start practicing with your game to see how it looks, and more importantly, how well it plays. What do you have to say to anyone who wants to become a game developer? They should start by playing as many games as possible. It's a good idea to play the old ones as well as the new. There are so many old titles out there which were really popular at one time. So it's good to experience what made that game great. It might give you an idea for creating an amazing game in the future. Sometimes I wonder how much our personalities are affected by our family members. Do you feel that way, Oscar? Well, I think I see what you mean. I've got three siblings in my family. My sisters, Kathy and Molly, and my brother Tom, we're all quite different from one another. Kathy is the oldest, and she takes after my mum. But we're not sure who Molly takes after. My aunt Claire, maybe. My brother Tom is just like my dad, which is weird because they look nothing like each other. That's not the case with me, though. Sometimes people think my dad is my brother because we look so similar. But you're nothing like your dad, are you? I remember meeting your dad when he came to our class once. He's kind of shy, isn't he? He didn't have much to say, unlike you. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm the most talkative member of my family. I read an interesting article about it. It compared our personalities to other features we get from our parents, such as eye colour. My parents have both got brown eyes, and so does my sister Sue. However, my eyes are blue. How strange! I know, so confusing. Well, although brown eyes are the most likely possibility. In some cases, it's still possible to have blue eyes. My grandmother did, so I must have got it from her. I was pleased to find that out because I really love my gran. That's nice. I suppose that's probably true about every type of physical appearance, like hair color and maybe height. But it's so unusual with my family because everyone is different. When we have a family get together, my aunts, uncles, and cousins attend, and you might wonder how we're related to one another. My dad and I are not overweight, but we're not exactly thin. My brother Tom looks like my uncle Martin, tall and thin. Most of us have got the same hair color, but my sister Molly is almost blonde, just like my aunt Claire. Maybe that's why they've got similar personalities. No, that's impossible. Well, actually, I don't know exactly how it works, but you might be onto something. Welcome to our program. 
graduate job world. With us today is one of the leading experts in employment, Peter Thompson. He's going to talk about a worrying trend for young people in the job market, namely unpaid internships. Can you briefly explain the idea to our listeners, Peter? Of course. An unpaid internship is basically working for free, but with the hope that it will lead to an actual paid job. For instance, if a recent graduate wants to work in economics, they might work for free in a bank doing an unpaid internship. Right. And how does a candidate get one of these positions? It's similar to how they would get an ordinary job. They send out their updated CV, which would probably have very little experience listed on it at that point in time. Then they would do interviews. They would be competing with other candidates, naturally, so they should still try to stand out. If they can include a reference from a professor or from some other type of job that they held, that would help. Well, that all sounds great so far. Sure. These positions, unpaid internships, are often a great opportunity for young graduates to get a well-paid job eventually. However, studies have shown that for some candidates, working without pay can blow their chances of getting decent employment. Really? Do explain. Well, Around a quarter of graduates will work for free for one or two companies to help get their career started. And many of them will get good jobs with decent salaries. For those who do this with three or more companies, the study shows that they do not go on to get decent jobs. And in fact, the unpaid internships were a complete waste of time for them. Mm. That's so disappointing for these poor graduates. They must be quite angry. Do you think perhaps that's true for older graduates? Or they perhaps hadn't passed their degree? That doesn't seem to be the case. According to another study, those candidates working for free got the same kinds of high marks at university as paid employees. Seems we've got a mystery on our hands. Could you talk a little bit more about the topic? Hi, Anna. Hi, Jakob. Do you want to watch a film tonight? Hi, Ben. OK, sounds good. How about Danny and the Big Band? I know you haven't seen it, Ben, but what about you, Jakob? Have you? Yeah, I have. Sorry, Anna. I know you really want to watch it, but I'd rather not watch it again. OK. What about Tilly and Mr Wood? Oh, but that's a romantic comedy, isn't it? I'm not really into them. Really, Ben? I find them moving and heartwarming. Yeah, I'm with you on that, Jacob. OK, I know. The Journey of the Elephants. The film poster looks great. Oh, yeah. I've been wanting to see that too, Ben. I'm just looking it up on my phone now. Oh, did you know it lasts three hours? I'm not really keen on long films. Really, Anna? It's only six o'clock. We've got all evening. Ah, good point. I suppose that's OK, then. Oh, but look at this. I've just checked online. It's got lots of negative comments. The special effects are terrible. The dialogue is unnatural. <gasps> Worst film ever made. <sighs> well, that's no good. Let's watch something else then. Any ideas, Ben? How about a mystery film? Like the Harmer Brothers. I'm not crazy about mysteries. I never understand what's happening. That's the whole point. You're not supposed to be able to follow the plot the whole time. I quite like them too. 
They're strange, but the plot is always original. I've heard really good things about this one. It's supposed to be really dangerous and exciting. OK, that's a maybe for the Harmer brothers then. Any other ideas? Um, OK, what do we all want in a film? Famous stars, something that makes you laugh, lots of action? I like films that make me laugh. I'm with you on that, Jakob. I love comedies too. <laughs> me too. So maybe we should watch Bill's Night Off. Good idea, Anna. Ah, but it looks like that one's not available, unfortunately. Let's go for the Harmer Brothers. Is that OK with you, Jakob? OK, fine. I'm going to watch Bill's Night Off with my cousins next week anyway. All right, then. Let's go for that. Fine. But let's watch Tilly and Mr Wood together soon, Jakob. I've just come back from a camping trip with friends. It was quite tiring walking across the hills, but worth it because of the views. I had my camera with me, so I took a lot of pictures of the gorgeous scenery. I also managed to get some great photos of some animals, like a rabbit, as well as flowers and trees. While we were out there, we met a man who was walking his dog through an area of grassland. I was worried because I saw the dog near some wild mushrooms, which I thought might be dangerous. The dog didn't eat any of them, though, because I threw a stick for the dog to chase after. In the evening, we took a boat out on a lake. It was so peaceful and relaxing. We watched the orange sky of a beautiful sunset as we sat in the boat. Later, we ate some food outdoors. Our guide showed us how to use pieces of wood to make a fire, so there wouldn't be too much smoke. We all ended up with some delicious food on our plate. I wasn't sure if I would like sleeping in a tent. I'd never done it before. I was worried that spiders and other insects would get into my sleeping bag. There weren't any insects. But I thought I could hear some animals outside my tent. I had a look, but it was so dark I couldn't see anything. It rained a lot during the night and the ground was pretty wet in the morning. The next day, we went to a cave. We all wore big boots. Our guide had a lot of equipment with him, such as ropes and torches. All in all, it was a great trip. Do you want a cup of coffee? No, thanks. I'm trying to cut down. I've already had one this morning. Always thinking about your health. That's right. You already go to the gym four times a week. I don't know how you do it. I like staying in shape. I've just joined a new football team. Playing sports gives me energy and it improves my sleep too. Maybe I'll give it a try. Are you still doing that exercise class at the sports centre? Yes, I go once a week. Which night? I go on a Thursday now. I used to go on a Tuesday, but I had to move to Thursday because I usually have a meeting at work which ends late. And do you enjoy it? To be honest, I've thought about quitting a few times. Sometimes I'm not in the mood for exercise every week. I'm really tired and just want to sit in front of the TV. Oh, really? I'm going to keep on going, though. Well, maybe I'll see you there. I'm thinking of joining. Do you fancy a game of tennis next weekend? Maybe. 
I'll have to check if I'm free. You play a lot, don't you? Quite a bit. I play a game most weekends if the weather's fine. Do you play any other sports? No. I used to play volleyball a lot, but that was a long time ago. I'd quite like to take up golf, but I don't know if I'd have enough time at the weekends. Do you think your diet is healthy? Yes, I eat a lot of fruit and vegetables. I love carrots, broccoli and mushrooms. I can't stand tomatoes, but everything else is fine. I used to eat quite a lot of chocolate, but I gave it up a couple of years ago. Could you stop eating meat? Probably. I like it, but I only eat it a couple of times a week. Do you want to go out for dinner next Friday evening? I can't on Friday. I'm going to my aunt's house. It's her birthday. Are you free on another day? Let's see. Monday and Tuesday I'm working. My friend Mariam and I are working out together on Wednesday. I'm going to watch football with my brother on Thursday. I think I'll be out shopping really late on Saturday. How about Sunday? Sorry, I'm busy then. Thanks for inviting me to that dinner party. Your friend Dave seems nice. Yes, he's lovely. Did you like his cooking? Oh, it was delicious. Mm, I don't usually like spicy food, but it was quite nice. He certainly knows a lot about spices. Well, food is really all he ever wants to discuss. But not everyone is interested in cooking. No, I think Ben was getting a bit bored. He kept trying to change the subject. Oh, he's always arguing with Dave. Video gaming is big business. A lot of people are players. There were 2.69 billion gamers in the world by the end of 2020. Money from the sales of games reached over $159.3 billion in the same year. China tops the list of countries which spends the most on gaming. The United States is next. Japan follows in third place. South Korea is fourth. And Germany is fifth. The early developers of video games were scientists who were playing around with computers for fun. In 1952, British professor A.S. Douglas from the University of Cambridge made a noughts and crosses game. In 1958, William Higginbotham created a tennis game which visitors played at his laboratory in New York. In the USA in the 1970s, arcade machines began to appear in shopping malls and restaurants. Home versions of these games also became popular. When the computer game industry was in its early days, Development costs were low and companies could easily make a lot of profit. As computing power increased, companies needed to employ more people to develop the games. The games became much more expensive to produce. In recent years, there have been changes in the way people buy games. While in the past, many people bought games from shops, these days, more people buy digital downloads. There has also been a change in the way people play games. There has been a shift from games on consoles to mobile gaming. Online gaming is very popular now. Video gaming isn't just sitting at home with a friend and a console connected to your TV set. Today, Millions of players connect at the same time to play games. These days, there is also an economy in the games themselves. Some games have their own in-game money, which players can buy with real pounds or dollars. They can then use that money to buy things like clothes for their virtual game character. 
Gaming is a huge industry, and the income it produces continues to rise. So, what did you think of the house? I liked some things, not everything though. How about the living room? I absolutely loved the wooden floor. The worst thing for me was probably the colour of the walls. <laughs> not to my taste at all. We definitely have to paint them before we moved in. One of the biggest advantages is the amount of space. We'd be able to fit in plenty of furniture. Our sofa would look great in there, I think. I'm a bit worried that there wasn't enough light, though. Didn't it seem really dark in there? Yes, I suppose it was. So, what did you think about the kitchen? I loved the view. What? I mean, the view looking out of the window. I think it'd be very nice looking out at the garden while I'm doing some cooking. Yes, I liked that too. There weren't many cupboards, though. We'll need more storage space than that. Yes, I noticed that as well. I thought we'd need to paint them. I wasn't keen on the colour at all. I agree. One positive was the big freezer. The owners said that will be staying. How about the main bedroom? What did you think about that? Well, the thing that struck me most as being a problem was the shape. It was a little strange, don't you think? Yes, it was quite long and narrow. Also, the window is facing the road. It would have been better to have the bedroom at the back of the house. Do you think it might be noisy? Yes, it'd be annoying if it keeps you awake at night. One good thing, though, was that it has its own bathroom. The best thing for me was the fitted wardrobe. That was huge. I should be able to get plenty of clothes in there. A child can get up when they like if they're being educated at home. And there's no need for mum or dad to drive them to school, so that's good. The key thing, though, is that with home education, a child can learn things that interest them. They can decide the topics. They can decide the speed of learning. The whole learning experience is driven by them. Ways of communicating have changed considerably over the last decade. Every minute, over 350,000 tweets, 15 million texts and 210 million emails are sent. Conversations that once happened over the phone or face-to-face -face now happen online in written format. In my opinion, the advantages of written communication, such as having a permanent record that can often be more easily understood than verbal communication, outweigh the disadvantages. Motivation is important if you want to learn a foreign language. There should be something that makes you want to learn. Maybe you want to read books or watch films from that country. Perhaps you want to visit a foreign country and enjoy the food and drink. It could be that you want to get a job in a different country. What's important is to have some practical reason to motivate you to learn, otherwise you'll lose interest. For a lot of young people, school PE lessons are the only time they get proper exercise. And it's so important that young people continue to be active. School sport gives them the opportunity to improve their fitness and general health. There are other benefits, of course. For example, it's good for their mental health. It encourages teamwork. And doing sport out of school stops boredom. But mostly, it's about getting them to move. Well, for me, it meant I didn't have to decide what to wear every morning. There are other reasons, of course. Parents don't feel the pressure of their children asking for the same expensive clothes that their friends have. 
It also helps make school children feel that they belong to a group. But for me, I feel that life is so much simpler when you have the same thing to wear every day. As a teenager, you have to make some big decisions that can affect the rest of your life. When it comes to choosing what to do when you leave school, I think the most important thing to do is to find something you love. However, that's easier said than done, as many people may not be able to choose just one subject that they really enjoy. As a student advisor, I try to really understand teenagers' strengths, talents, and personalities in order to guide them to find their passion in life.